Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at windows and surfaces. So what do I mean by that? Well, an SDL surface is basically something that holds pixels. So like when we render a window, for instance, we have individual pixels that we can access and, well, copy and change on the screen. And that's basically how we make a graphical application by changing around pixels. So today we're going to look at it from the perspective of the window that we've been creating. And then eventually we're going to move into doing this in a hardware accelerated manner by talking about textures in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the code that we've been writing so far. So if you've been following along in this series, we should have something like this, where I basically have this SDL struct here. And in the last video, I divided it up into different parts here where I have a tick function that does the input update and rendering. Input is all the input stuff that we played around with. Feel free to remove most of this other than the quit event is probably useful at this point here. Um, and then we have the update and rendering functions, which we're going to start playing around with with surfaces. And then, of course, our main loop in the last episode where we did some stuff with computing the frame rate. So with all that in mind and all this code here, let's go ahead and just build this application here. And if I run it here, you will again see, well, my window here with the frame rate computed and uh, you know some of the events that we're handling for the mouse position. Now, of course, what are the pixels in the background of this window? Probably not what we've wanted, right? We've wanted to do something graphical up to this point. Uh, we've had our window for a while, event handling and some things like that that are exciting, but again, no pixels to be drawn here. So we want to actually change that. So how do we do this? Well, let's dive into the SDL documentation. And today I'm going to take you to a few different places here. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to take you to uh, surfaces. Okay. So what is a surface? Well, a surface is basically a buffer that holds pixels. I mean, you can think of this like a bitmap. We'll use a bitmap type. So if you've seen bitmap images, BMP as the extension, that's what we're going to be loading into surfaces. If you actually look at the SDL surface struct here, you will see of importance here, the width, the height, and then an array of the pixels here. Now this is a void pointer because we can organize our pixels in different ways. Basically, if they're images that consist of red, green, and blue components, uh, for instance, or maybe only one of those components or a mix of them, and they could have different sorts of bits. So there's all sorts of interesting stuff that are handled in this SDL pixel format. Again, another nice feature of the SDL library is it can handle all these things. But just start, let's just worry about the width, height, and then the actual pixels here. Okay. And then of course, there will be different flags for things that you want to do here. So anyways, as far as uh, images are arranged, if you're totally not familiar with this, let's just do a little uh, example here. Let me open up this guy here. Uh, and let's give ourselves a nice white background so we can draw. And um, basically, what will be helpful is if you want to create your own image, you can use any program you want. I'm using GIMP uh, as my uh, editor here. and. Um, what I mostly want to talk to you about, though, is about how a surface is arranged. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit here. Uh, and I'll just draw for a little bit here. Uh, but again, basically an image is arranged. We can think of it like a two-dimensional grid with a, again, width and height here. And then every one of these individual boxes here, which are the pixels, consists of three components, typically a red, green and blue component. Okay, so usually eight bits to represent the red value, eight bits for the green and eight bits for blue is a suggested arrangement. So 24 uh, bits or three bytes per pixel. And sometimes you have an alpha component here, which I'll label as a here. So RGBA, which will tell you if that pixel is transparent or how transparent it is. Now, again, depending on what types of graphics programming you're doing, these values can range based off of how much color information you need, or maybe you might just have one component like G if you want a sort of grayscale image. And again, that compresses the image so it's more efficient for loading in a game or you know, if you're taking a photo or whatever the case might be. Okay, so that's the basic mental model you can have. And this is exactly what an SDL uh, underscore surface does. I'll just abbreviate it there since I've run out of room here. Uh, but that's the basic idea. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just save this image, just so we have something to play around with. Uh, and importantly, I'm just going to call it test, but with the .bmp extension, because BMP files are what uh, 
the SDL natively gives us a load function for. And then if you can write your own function that can load pixels of different formats, as long as you put them in the correct format, that's totally fine here. So you'll see I have this RGB format here, R8, G8, and B8 here for how many bits for each of those color channels. And again, you can change this around depending on uh, what's needed and you can get into all the color theory or um, uh, as to why we might have that many bits per channel. Uh, or if you know, please uh, comment in the discussion below. I'd love to learn from you. So anyways, uh, okay, so we've got our surface uh, or a bitmap image created, but how do we load this into one of these STL surface objects? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look here in our surface related functions here. SDL load BMP is a handy one to have here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Load a bitmap image file and you'll see that it returns one of these surface objects for us. So the SDL parser will load it. I don't know how wide the, uh, the image is in terms of uh, pixels, the width. Uh, pitch was another one of those fields. So we'll know again, uh, based off the color channels, how many bits per uh, you know a row there are and some of these other things. but. For our purposes, again, we just need to be able to load and create a surface here. So let's go ahead and start with that. I'm gonna just for now put in my SDL application uh, a pointer to one surface, uh, a test surface for us to play with. Okay, and let's do this in the constructor just so we have something uh, that we can use uh, or, or it's a obvious place to set things up. And again, the file path. Now, again, just a little note here. I'll talk about this in my other series, but if you're a beginner, relative file paths are great. Uh, you know, don't specify the full path, you know, home, mic, uh, you know, whatever this tutorial is, number 12, etc., because that's going to be a different path than somebody else. So always use your relative file paths here. Uh, so something like that will do the trick here, right? It's in this same directory as the executable will be found. Now, SDL load bitmap, again, as far as the signature will go, if it doesn't find this file, it will return null here. So if you do want to do a check here and say like if m surface equals null pointer, uh, you know, put in a cert or something, uh, you know, something like that here. So let's just go ahead and compile this, uh, see if it works here. Oh, I don't have my uh, assert here. I forget if it's C assert or just assert. Let's see here. Uh, I think it's something like this, see assert, and it doesn't take two arguments. I forgot I'm in my D language world, uh, but I think I could do something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, it runs fine, that means we found the file. Uh, and just as a test here, you know, put in some like garbage value here. Let's see if we're able to actually capture that error. Again, uh, yep, yeah, assertion, you know, did not find the path. Give yourself a better error message, improper, file path found, something like that here. Okay, so that's just a little bit of testing. I might remove that in future videos uh, just so I don't cl uh, clutter up the code, but uh, we have our surface loaded. Now, what can I do with the surface? Because I actually want to see it now. Well, one thing that we can do with this is copy it to our window. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to figure out how to do that. And I'm just going to do this to the documentation, so I learn uh, with me. Uh, let's look at our window management because that's where I want to actually copy these pixels to. Okay, um, so there's a couple different functions here. They're usually called uh, blitting uh, our surface, uh, which means to copy it. Uh, so actually, let me open up and keep the surface uh, here. So blit is kind of like uh, mem copy. So blit surface uh, perform a fast blit from the source surface to the destination surface. Uh, with clipping. So if we uh, want to copy a surface that's very large to a smaller place, it will clip it and get rid of those pixels for us. Okay, so let's hold on to this blit surface function here. Uh, it looks like it's got a lot of information that we we'll want to dive into, but let's figure out with a window uh, what sort of surface related functions we have here. Okay, so we can destroy a surface. There's something with uh, the embedded OpenGL stuff here. Let's just see if we can get the window surface here. So get the SDL surface associated with the window. Ah, okay. So if I figure out what surface is associated with my window, maybe I can copy the pixels over it. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that. That's going to be our little experiment. Uh, and we'll keep the documentation open just so we keep that in our uh, brains here. Um, and I'm going to want to do this in the rendering. This is going to be our first sort of like rendering thing that we do here. So uh, let's see, let's just create a new SDL surface. I'm going to call it 
window surface equals SDL get window surface from our window. Okay. So again, let's compile. No mistakes here. And then let's look at blitting or copying into uh, from some source. That's our sort of current test surface to the uh, destination here. Okay. There is a destination here. Let me just copy this whole thing just so we can see it here in our code editor. All right. So again, it'll return true or false if it's successful. Uh, our source. So where are we copying from? Well, that's the one that we loaded here. Okay. Uh, M surface. Okay. Our member function, just a test surface that we have here. So let's kind of start filling in the blanks here of uh, things that we can figure out. Okay. It will return true or false. So you can do some error handling if this doesn't work for you. M surface. Uh, and then we've got these rectangles here. Well, what do those do? Okay, let's let's read a little bit more. So SDL rect here is a really important uh, short for rectangle. Uh, and there's a floating point version of this. Let me just show you that. Uh, let's see if it's related. It's not under here, I guess. But uh, there's a floating point version. We're just working with discrete pixels, so integers are fine. Um, but yeah, basically, this just tells us uh, the top left corner and the uh, that we're selecting with the x and the y coordinates and then the width and the height from that corner here okay so i'm just going to want to select the whole surface so from zero zero to the width and the height here uh, of this surface that i'm interested in from my source and copy the whole thing into the destination okay we'll be working with rectangles a lot so we'll see this uh often here uh so as the function goes here uh for blitting a surface into our window surface uh, basically, what we want to do is, well, we filled out the first parameter that says, here's our SDL surface. Then we want to say, OK, uh, copy the whole thing. Or you can just pass in null to copy this entire surface, which is what we want to do. OK, so we don't actually need to create this rectangle. And then the destination where we're copying to, which is our window surface, we got a pointer to that. Uh, and then this will say, copy the whole thing here. OK, and again, we can just pass in null here uh, to mean the whole entire thing. OK, so let's just see if this works here. Um, let's go ahead and give this a try. So I'm going to do the whole surface. And we'll see this. This is going to be consistent with some of our texturing functions as well. Where do I want to copy to? The window surface. And again, I'm going to pass in a null pointer to say, hey, copy the whole thing over. OK. Now for this one, I probably do want some uh, error checking. So if null pointer equals uh, is not equal to window surface, uh, then do the copy here. OK, let's go ahead and try that. And we're going to do this every frame, 60 frames per second, uh, or our target frame rate. It worked. Uh, OK, so let's see. What did we get here? Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. I get, well, whatever garbage was behind here. So it didn't quite work. I, I copied the surface, but do I need to do something else here? OK, so I got the window surface, I think. Um, or maybe, I mean, it wasn't null here. I mean, we could log uh, the air here. Let's see, we could say else uh, SDL log air. OK, let's go ahead and see if something interesting happens. OK, I don't see air popping up. I am printing out a bunch of other stuff here, but we, w we would see that. So OK, I think that was OK. So are there other functions that we might want to take a look at here? Uh, well, let's look at our little Surface API here. So surface. OK, destroy the surface, get the window surface, uh, set the surface. Oh, hey, there's an update function here. OK, so let's take a look at that here. Set uh, SDL update window surface. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it says copy the window surface to the screen here. OK, so this is kind of an explicit way again. Um, and it's nice. A lot of the SDL functions here, so SDL update window surface uh, for a window, a lot of the functions here uh, and I'll put it within this so we only need to do the successful. Uh, only have one job. Um, so that means you know we can do the copy, and then we need to explicitly do the update. Why? Well, this gets a little bit into something that I mentioned last video, where maybe we don't want to do this every frame. Or maybe we only need to do this to part of the window. So for instance, if I have like a graphical user interface where only the top left corner gets updated, I only really need to do the updating of the surface if I make some change here. OK, so that's kind of the idea here. Um, yeah, so we're doing the copy, but the explicit like present the new or updated window surface, um, you know, we, we do uh, explicitly here. 
Um, this, uh, a note here uh, for my SDL, old school SDL developers, this is like flip. Uh, and this has to do with something known as a uh, sort of back buffer type of situation, which we'll talk about. So if you've ever heard this phrase like double buffering, maybe when you're playing a game or something, um, that might be uh, of, of interest for you to uh, check out. So anyways, let's go ahead and recompile this and rebuild it and see, well, now it's working, okay? Uh, and we have an image uh, on the background. So uh, in theory, you can start building a game by having surfaces and just updating the window. Um, and again, you have explicit control over how you're copying pixels onto the window. And this is all being done in software mode, right? We're gonna move into hardware stuff, as I mentioned as at the start of the video here. But again, this is just getting us the, you know, sort of software stuff. This will basically work on any computer that, uh, you know, can do software rendering, right? It can pop open a window here. But of course, if we're building games, we wanna do things hardware accelerated so they're faster. So you do have to ask yourself, well, what's the cost of doing this copy every time? And if I haven't made any changes, do I need to make this copy? And the answer for that is no, right? So you can um, you know, get more efficient. So if I'm building a little chess game or a checkers game, right? The only time I need to update it is after I click somewhere and move a chess piece or a checkers piece, okay? So that's the basic idea here. Alrighty, folks, so in this lesson, just to give you a brief uh, recap and show you all the code here, we learned about surfaces what they are, they are loading pixels. We have a handy function that can load specifically the BMP image format. I showed you a free tool to do that, the GNU GIMP editor. And uh, we did a little bit of error handling, which has been rare so far in this series, but you can do it. And then we talked about updating the window surface that is drawing the pixels. Now, eventually we're gonna want a hardware accelerated version of this surface, so we'll update in a different way, but we can, in fact, again, copy pixels to our window, or even just part of our window if you want to have, again, a graphics user interface that's just doing software stuff. All right, so we still have our full framework here. I'll just scroll through that. We didn't touch anything else otherwise, uh, but now we have a nice uh, sort of graphical application. You can you know, put an image on a screen and send that to somebody and uh, or maybe click and show a different surface or something as a nice exercise. All right, folks, so with that said, as always, I'll point you to uh, course.mshot.io. Uh, in fact, I'll point you to something new. Uh, you know, well, it's not new, but we have a community section, so that's one of the other reasons to follow along there if you're already following on YouTube. Otherwise, you can engage with the community there. And as always, thank you for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.